Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. Today we're going to be comparing the traditional Deba, the Funayuki, and the Ajikiri. Now I, you can see that they all have very similar silhouettes and profile, but they're actually very different knives. So let's compare the three. This is a Masamoto KS, traditional Deba, 165 millimeter and made of white number two. This is a Funayuki made by Yamashine. This is a white number one. And this is a 135 millimeter. This is a Tatafusa Ajikiri. This is 105 millimeter and this is blue number two. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is the traditional Daba is very thick in its spine. It is a single bevel knife. It is concave on the back. You can actually see that there's just a raised edge. Raised back, it's, it's beveled out so that way It'll help the food, the fish release from the knife. <clears throat> the next thing you have is the thinness of the Funayuki. This particular knife is meant to be used on a ship at sea. You can fillet a fish because of its thinness in comparison to the Deba. I would not use it to take off the head of the fish, but just fillet it. The Deba obviously is built for sturdiness and weight. You can use its weight and mass to help you drive through the back of the, the um, bone to sever the head and the tail. Then we're gonna go down to the Tatafusa. This particular Ajikiri is known as a wide petty. You could also call it a Ko Funayuki. They are very similar. This particular Tatafusa is actually barely thicker in the spine, but it would be great for handling small fish. So what we've got today is we've got three, we've got four fish of the same type, all snapper, and we are going to do the workload to clean the fish, fillet the fish, and we're going to show the three knives that work. And so let's get to it. Okay, so we're back and we have a couple of snapper. You can see they're smaller in comparison to the size of the knives, the right knife for the job. Traditionally, because of the fish, you would use the Deba. That is the traditional knife that we all know. But you can see 165 millimeter, it can seem a little bit too large. So let's just go ahead and show you the functionality of this particular knife. This one has the sheer weight that we can come in right behind the head and make our, make our first incision, flip it over, do the same thing. And because of the sheer density of this knife, the head came right off very quick, but you can see with what's left, this is a, this is a very small fish that we're working with. So let's just go ahead and do this with the bigger knife. Now I am not a sushi chef, so do not critique me on this. I'm going to move this closer to the cutting board and I'm going to make an incision along the back. And I'm trying to cut along the bone. Now what's nice is, what's nice about this knife is because it's rounded where the bevel is, it really does rest on the back of the bone. It's almost like it's bouncing off the back of the bone. So it's very easy to quote unquote, like feel the bone. It's almost, it literally is just kind of bouncing. Obviously the knife is very sharp, it has weight. We are able to completely remove this fillet without having to flip it over. And that's actually a really nice fillet, just a small fish. Okay. So let's go to a much smaller knife and see what it would be like. So this is the Funayuki. Again, this would be on the boat. We are doing this at sea. It's very thin. Um, I'm, I'm glad we were not trying to cut the head off because we might definitely damage the knife. This is a white number one, so you can imagine it definitely would have chipped the knife. So it should be, because it's thinner, it should technically slide a little easier Again, I can feel the bone. It's 
So it just seems like the bones are kind of talking to you. This is a very sharp knife, by the way, in case you haven't seen the other video where I sharpened it to a BESS score. That's best, best certified score of 68. So I really don't feel like I'm doing like a lot of work. Um, traditionally, I would have done this fillet from the, I would have turned the fish over. I'm simply not doing it for the sake of the video. I got another really nice fillet out of that. And obviously it was a little easier to manage with a little bit of a smaller knife. Let's clean our cutting board. That is, by the way, not the blood of myself, but the fish. Okay, so again, if I had to sever this, I could easily damage the knife. This one does have a little bit of a thicker spine as a achikiri. Let's see what we can do to not remove the head. I don't know that my fillet skills are, are that good. I am not a sushi chef. So I'm going to come behind the ear. This is a very sharp knife. So it really is already making my work seem very easy. But I personally would not want to cut the head off this knife, this fish with this knife. I mean, I love the knife, so I'm not even going to risk it. Um, I will say that that felt quite easy. Now look at the size of the fish in this knife. I mean, this knife is just fitting in there so neat. I mean, that's so nice and clean. Again, I'm not a sushi chef. It's a pretty decent filet. I would actually just clean that up. Of course, we didn't take the time to scale it either so let's go back here don't cut ourselves i mean this knife is you know call it a ko funayuki almost call it like a ko deba i mean it's it's a nice size really at 105 millimeter wow So Japanese people are cringing right now at my filleting skills. So you would normally come underneath. You would actually come above this dorsal fin. I do know that you do that. There's just some bones in this snapper, guys. Some bones in this snapper. And sushi chefs know that a little bit better than I do. There we go. Let's see how bad it is. I was much better a minute ago. I made myself look bad in the end. Let's see what we got. So we do have fish. Now all of that is good stock. So let's see what we got here. So that one wasn't great. This one was really nice. So you could easily come in here and if you were, again, if you were on the boat, you were trying to clean up the fish. It's a little nicer. But really for the size of the fish, you would pick the right size of the knife. Obviously that one's just huge in comparison. I hope I didn't embarrass myself too bad. I did want to show you the difference of the three knives. It wasn't about my, um, my filleting skills. That's why we get the knives and practice. 
Um, if you are a commercial chef and you want to come over and teach me how to do this, you're more than welcome. I'm just practicing all I can. I'll tell you what's nice, nice though, is when you have a really sharp knife. Like, how easy was that? Wow. Okay. So, very good. So, if you find value with this video, please hit the subscribe button. Um, like the video to let YouTube know that this was a good video. Hit the notification so you can be notified on our next video. And I'm going to ask you to please make some comments. Ask some questions. Um, if there's anything I can tell you about these great knives, how to sharpen them, I do have videos on how to sharpen them. And I have uh, best certified scores on these particular knives. I will, do, uh, I will have to do a video on sharpening a single beveled knife and see what kind of score we can get out of that. I appreciate you guys joining me. I have to clean the rest of this fish and get these scales off of here. And I'm hungry, so let's, let's eat.